Well, it's good to see all of you. Welcome back to church. Ellie Rises, please turn with me to the book of Psalm chapter 105. I want to read about two verses from there and we will get into the word of God. Psalm 105 and the verses 17. Did I say 105? Yeah, 17, 17 through 19. If we all have it, we can read it out loud together as your voice will allow you. Shall we read it? He, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for this blessed day you have given us. We ask, O oh God, that you speak to us in the language of our understanding. Let the word penetrate, bring change and transformation to us. I ask, O oh God, that you will speak through me. Touch these lips of clay. Wear me like a garment for your glory. And Lord, let me be an oracle in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. You may please be seated. You may please be seated. We have been speaking on the anointing to break barriers for the past couple of weeks. And um, we have learned so much. How many of you have learned a word or two and are walking in them? How many of you have learned something? Oh. Have you learned, oh, I want to see hands up. Have you learned something? Amen. Amen. And, and so today I want to um, draw the curtain. We want, you know, it's not finishing because you can never finish it. You know, <laughs> we, 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 this, this is a subject that we can keep teaching and teaching. But I want to end by speaking on the prize of the anointed. Everybody say with me, the prize of the anointed. You know... <laughs> We have learned so much. We've talked about the anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. That anointing, the anointing of the Holy Spirit produces power. The anointing, everyone say with me, the anointing produces power. Now it's good if you can write it because it's, it's good. A short pencil is always better than a long memory. Amen. So write, make notes. And the word power... That word power, uh, which is associated with the anointing, comes from the Greek word dunamis, which means ability. So the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the enablement is the ability of God in us. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 that you receive power. That means you regain ability. That ability is not human ability. That ability is the ability of God. And it will come upon you and you will become a witness of him. So God's ability is imparted through us or to us through the anointed. And so by def definition, the, the anointed is defined as the enablement or the impartation of God's ability upon a, a, a person, a yielded person, a, a vessel, an individual, and you carry out God's purpose. It is not for personal gain. It is for God's glory. It is so that the purposes and the will of God will be accomplished in this earth. Amen. And so we have looked at it, we have talked about it, and why it is so important, you know, because... The anointing itself, the anointing is not human. And so we, we have, you've heard me say it over and over again. And I, I will not stop saying it until it registered, registers that the anointing is of a heavenly material. The anointing is of God. But God operates through elements. So when we have the oil, the oil that we use, it is an earthly material representing what God is. So God is divine. And because he's divine, he uses earthly things. He uses the things that are here to show us and to teach us. And so when we talk about the anointing, it is not in the oil that we pour or the garments that we put on. It is not in the mantle. 
It is in the ability of God, God's ability that comes upon us. Can I get an amen? amen? But you know that the anointing is heavenly. It is a spiritual substance which contains God's power. And like, like electricity when it is stored, the anointing of God can be upon an individual's life and the power and the ability of God in that individual will enable him to do exploits. So, for instance, in Acts chapter 19 and verse 11, the Bible says that how God worked unusual miracles through the hands of Paul so that handkerchiefs, aprons, would come out of his body. I mean, things that he has used would touch the sick and they will be healed. And so the anointing that was in Paul's hand was transmitted and stored in those handkerchiefs, in those mantles, and people that were sick would touch them, and they will be healed because of the power of God that was flowing through the apostle Paul. Elisha was so anointed that his anointing was still stored even in his dead bones. Elisha was dead, but the anointing was so powerful. God's ability so much was in him that dead people would be raised. There was enough stored to raise a man from the dead. That is a, that's the ability of God. It can be transfer, trans, transferred through or it can be imparted through the laying on of hands. And we see that through scripture. And so we've looked at the anointing and how important it is in the life of a believer. That anointing enables you to do all that God has called you to do. And more importantly, the anointing is a yoke breaker. Can I get an amen? amen? The anointing enables us to break barriers. And that has been the burden of this installment. To appreciate that nothing in this life becomes great without a measure. We have, and we have come to establish that with every success that we will have in this life, there will be a pushback. We, are, we, we, are, we deal with barriers. Life is full of barriers. Life is full of challenges. And so to surmount or break these barriers, you need to utilize the anointing, the ability of God that is in you to break out of them. That is why Isaiah said in Isaiah 10, 27, that by the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. I pray this morning that whatever has been a yoke be broken by the anointed. You know, we said that exploit, one of the definitions of exploit is to utilize the power within to carry out great things. And I pray that the power of God in you this morning will be activated. You will increase. You know, you increase. You grow in the anointing. And may you grow in the anointing and break out of every barrier. Anything that is standing in your way in the name of Jesus. Mental barriers be broken. Amen. Marital barriers be broken. Amen. Financial barriers be broken. Academic barriers be broken. Health barriers be broken by the anointed. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say, I break out from every limitation by the anointing of God. As I raise my hand and I lift my voice, I activate the power of God. Now speaking with authority, I activate the power of God that is within me. The ability of God stored in me to break out from every limitation, every barrier in this life in the name of Jesus. Amen. But today I want to explain the fact that the anointing is costly. The anointing is not cheap. There is a price that must be paid. You realize that everything in life has a price. Tell somebody, do you realize that? <laughs> you know, the chair you are sitting on has a, a price. The electricity we are using has a price. Everything in life has a a price. Nothing is for free. Nothing. There's nothing free under the sun. You know, anytime you see free, you have to be careful because free is an, is an enticement onto something. Hello? 
Nothing is free. The moment they say free, watch out. Have you received those emails that tell you that you've, re- you've won a free trip? All inclusive. And then they give you, oh, it, it's 10,000, it's waved off. And then you get excited and you join in and you go in and fill all the forms until you get to the very end. Then you realize that you're going to pay more than what they gave you for free. <laughs> There's nothing free under the sun. And it, it's even the reason why many nations are poor because they are controlled by the free mentality. A lot of countries, oh, we, we, we want things for free. Everything must be for free. No. Nobody will give you anything for free. We must pay a price for everything if we want to be successful. Amen? Amen. There's a success story in, I mean, for, for every success story, there's a price to be paid. And, and sometimes they may not tell, tell you, but it's there. You know, you read everything until there's a fine print that they write it so little that you can't see. And when you have committed and signed, they tell you, oh, but it was there. And this one, I pray that you will understand is you must be mentally prepared and be willing to pay the price to break the barriers that are in your life. The barriers of established traditions that we've dealt with. We've talked about traditions in our family. You know, Gideon had to pay a price when he stood out to break old altars. If you're going to break old traditions, old altars, family trends, you have to pay the price. The mentality, mindset that we want to want, we need deliverance from, it doesn't come just like that. You have to pay the price. There's, there comes a time of waiting. There comes a time of preparation. And, and because of time and because of the service, I might not be able to go into many examples to give you through Scripture, but I want to give you some few examples through Scripture. Anointed men of God who overcame by paying the price. And the first one I would give us is the man Moses. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, if you can please Help me, verse 24 to 27. The Bible says that by faith, read out with me if you may, please. By faith, when he became of age, did what? He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. This is very important. He refused, he became of age, and he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, You know the story of Moses and how he ended in the house of Pharaoh. And so naturally, he grew up being entitled to all the royalties and the beauty and everything that was in Pharaoh's house. But the Bible says that there came a moment where he became of age and he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. The the next verse. Choosing, read out with me, choosing... Rather to do what? To suffer affliction. Now note that very carefully. Why would you sacrifice living in royalty, being treated as a priest, or I I beg your pardon, as a prince? Why would you sacrifice the glory and the fame and choose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the uh, enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. The next verse. Read out loud with me. He did what? Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he looked to the reward. The first price that you need to pay for the anointing, I call it the price of difficult decisions. If you're going to operate in the anointing to break barriers, then you need to pay the price of making difficult decisions. Here is a man. Look at Moses. He had everything going for him. 
found himself well positioned even to become a king in the land. But that was what, what was destined for him. What God had destined for him was bigger than Egypt. And the Bible says that he made a decision when he became of age. He grew up. He matured. I pray that you will mature. You will grow up in your walk with God. And I'm not talking about age because maturity does not necessarily mean age. Because there are many old people that have seen age but they are not matured. I pray that you, God will give you wisdom on that one. The Bible says that Moses became of age. He grew up. He matured. And he had a dream. He said, the Bible says that he esteemed the reproach of Christ. Greater. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. Which means he had to make a, a difficult decision. He had to look at everything that, that, that was around him. Should I settle in the comfort of Egypt? Or pay the price to become what God has destined for me. And there, there are a couple of things in, 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 in that text. Number one, he refused a wrong identity. In making the, that difficult decision, Moses had to refuse a wrong identity. The identity of a Pharaoh or Pharaoh's daughter, uh, the son of Pharaoh's daughter was not his true identity. And it was going to cost him. It was going to cost him the throne. He just didn't want to settle under a false identity. Please, if you're going to walk in the anointing, break barriers and be different, you must make that difficult decision not to carry a wrong identity. What have you put on? What name tag do you have on you? He chose, number two, to suffer for the right thing. He suffered. And there is often pain in affliction. He knew he could enjoy Egypt. It was nice with all the pomps, with all the pageantry, with all the beautiful thing that was in Egypt. But he recognized that all of that was fleeting. Please hear me this morning. Don't settle for what looks comfortable. The anointing does not come easy. The Bible says in John chapter 6 and verse 15, the Bible says that Jesus perceived you know, therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, the people were about to make him king. He was king already, but the Bible says that in the eyes of the men, they looked at him and they saw something different. And they wanted to make him their king. Please, don't settle for human promotion. Settle for God's promotion. It is better that God, that, uh, that God promotes you than for man to promote you. And he chose that right thing. Seek for God's elevation. That is why it is not every door that opens for you that you must enter. Because some doors can be set ups. Is that the door God has opened for you? Number three, he esteemed the value of suffering greater than that temporary riches of Egypt. In other words, it looked good. It was fun. It was enjoyable, but it was only for a moment. He put value on his destiny. I pray this morning that you put value on your destiny. Don't settle for things because they look nice. Because they are good now. They give you a temporary pleasure, but eternity of suffering. I pray that God will help us make that decision. Number, number four, he considered the price. The price over the price of the decision. In other words, he knew that you will have to pay a bigger price in order to get the reward. And I pray this morning that in all your decisions, in your anointed, if you are going to be a barrier breaker, if you're going to walk in the anointed, you've got to be prepared to pay the price of difficult decisions. Amen? So what is number one? What did Moses do? What was the difficult decision that he made? Number one? Wrong identity. Please don't put on wrong identity. The fact that everybody calls you that name doesn't make you your name. Jacob walked as Jacob until God encountered him and said, your name is not Jacob, your name is Israel. He was called a supplanter because of his birth, experiences of life. Jabez was called Jabez, a man of sorrow, until he encountered God and said, Lord, if I'm blessed, why am I like this? The Bible says that God blessed him. I pray that don't allow people to tag you and give you names and identities that are not yours. 
May you carry God's identity. And then number something, number two, what was the second thing? Choose to suffer for the right thing. Serving God must cost you. Tell somebody, serving God will cost you. Oh, second service, I'm going to deal with it on another dimension. But serving God will cost you. You will lose some things. You will lose some pleasures. Sometimes it will even cost you money. Like this morning, you could have the opportunity to either go to work and make some extra hours, uh, some extra money, but you have to choose between hearing the word of God, being in fellowship, and then going to work. It will cost you. There are some people that I know that they don't want to have anything with church on Sunday morning because Sunday morning they consider it their day of rest. Because they say we work Monday to Friday. Saturday and Sunday we must work. But you wake up in the morning and you dress up. Even when you have come from work tired, you get up and you still go to work because of his presence. It, in my course, it's the right thing to do to stay in his presence because in his presence there is fullness of joy. If you are going to make it from your Monday to Friday, I know people that say, but pastor, I pray in the morning. Yes, but still the Bible says that do not neglect the assembling of yourselves together. There is power in fellowship. There is power in coming together. If it were not so, the church wouldn't have started. It is just this, this, this uh, um, generation, we have become situational generation. We worship God based on circumstances. And so after the pandemic, I know some people that have gotten accustomed to watching TV and watching streaming. So we would rather watch streaming than be in his presence. And they say that, oh, I would rather be there. It was only, you see, could it be that God was testing us during the pandemic to see what we become comfortable with? Let me skip that and go to my sermon. What was number three? He did what? He esteemed the value of suffering. I'm telling you, some things that are running through my head right now as I'm speaking. But I have to be disciplined with time. Greater than temporary riches. That money is temporary. Whatever you be paid for here on a with or for on earth for your work is temporary. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word. See, the reward sometimes as believers... We only look at what we must get here and we forget that eternity is the hope of our faith. We are not saved here for, for this earth. We are saved because of what he has for us. And so everything that you have here will pass away. When you die and we bury you, you don't take the money with you. Even though I know some cultures that will put some money in your casket and put clothes on there and say that when you get on the highway, you might need to change clothes. And you might need to cross a river and you need to, you know, use this when you go on. But I, I don't know. I've not been there. <laughs> but I, I don't know. But the truth is that whatever mansion you build here on earth, you will leave it behind. Shouldn't that be a sign to all of us that our lives are not for what is here? Because what is here will pass away. Oh, you build and save for people that you don't like to come and inherit. Of course. But what happens to our life after this place? And that is what the temporary riches of Egypt is. This place is temporary. What is before us is permanent. And number four, he considered the price over the price. Now I want you to look at a second man who was anointed. And I'll touch on these things briefly. We looked at Moses. The, the second person that I want you to learn from is Joseph whose story we, we read. The Bible says that he sent a man before them. Please give me that scripture, our text again, Psalm 105 verse 17. God had to send a man before them, Joseph, to prepare the way. He sent him. But the Bible says that in sending him, he had to be sold as a slave. Can you imagine? Why do you send the man to be sold as a slave, to go into slavery? Joseph had genuine dreams. He had dreams of greatness, dreams of preeminence, dreams of rising up to be somebody, but he had to pay the price, pain. He had to go through pain. The Bible says in the next verse that they hurt his feet with fetters. If you are going to walk in the anointing and break barriers, your feet are going to be hurt. You're going to, and you, listen, you will deal with pain. 
You will go through painful things and it is not the case. It is what the anointing is. The anointing will cause you pain. It's interesting because this generation is averse to pain. We try to medicate ourselves out of every trial. We don't even know how to spell endurance. We cannot stand the word persevere. We don't know what it means. We, we preach and we speak breakthrough. But we don't know how to go through. You need to understand that pain is necessary. You will never go beyond the threshold of pain you are willing to endure. One of the beautiful books I've read on pain is by one of my mentors, Dr. Sam Chan. And I recommend that book to every leader. If you are going to lead and lead well, please read Dr. Sam Chan's book. Leadership pain. If you are called to lead, then you must know that you will need to bleed in order to lead. He will bleed you so that you can mature to lead. Am I talking to leaders this morning? And that's why, you know, it, we, people, are, especially our younger generation, they, they want to sign up for soft life. The microwave age, everything must become easy. Soft life. Oh, but you don't understand. Yes, we've gone through, yes, we've gone through the stairway and we are making elevators for you, but sometimes the elevators will break down. And you have to take the stairs. Tell somebody, get out of the soft life. Say, it will not help you. Tell another person, life is tough. Do you, even Jesus, do you, even Jesus, Jesus who is God, he had to pay the price. He had to go through pain. Give, give me Hebrews 12 and verse 2 from the Message Bible. Are we breaking out? Are we, are we ready for, for, for some greater dimensions of the anointed by breaking barriers through pain? So your pain is not because God doesn't like you, but God has to mature you through your pain. Oh, no. this side was quiet. <laughs> Let me try this area. I said your pain is not because God does not like you. But God has to mature you. Okay, now, now you have, now you okay, you try. Let, let me try this side here. Let me try this side here. I said your pain is not because God does not like you. But God has to prepare you for where he's taking you. And that's why you don't cast away your world, wilderness experience. You need the wilderness in order to enjoy the promised land. If you cannot handle the wilderness experience, you will not know what it means to drink milk from the promised land. You will not know how to chew bones. The Bible says concerning Jesus. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers, those who have blazed away, all these veterans sharing us on, it means we, 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 we better get on with it. Get, get strip, strip down, start running and never quit. Don't, no extra spiritual fat, I like that. No parasite, parasitic sins. And say, keep your eyes. Everybody say, keep your eyes. Keep your eyes on who? Jesus, what did he do? Who both began... And finish the race. So it is good to begin, but it is more important to finish. He both began and finished this race we are in. The same race we are in, he took it and he finished it. So you have no excuse to quit. You have no reason to give up because of this temporary disappointment. Because of the pain that you're dealing with. Because of the money you don't have. Is it because of the husband who left you? Is it because of the job that fired you? Is it because, listen, you will, endure, you will have to endure. The Bible says this. I like the continuous, continuous. It says, steady how he did it. And you know how you steady? How do you steady? With diligence, you sit down. Listen, you must steady Jesus. How did he do it? Because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That accelerating finish in 
And with God, he could put up with anything along the way, the cross, the shame, then whatever. What are you putting up with in this life? Why do you want to give up? Joseph dealt with pain. If you want to consider his pain, he dealt with the pain of being misunderstood. That's a pain. Being misunderstood by his own siblings who misunderstood his dreams. Listen, your dreams will be misunderstood. You say you have a vision, you want to be great, you will be misunderstood. People would misinterpret it. They couldn't reckon it. How would you, a little boy, rise up to become our leader. But in the end, what happened? Joseph's dream became a reality. He saved a day. And many of you might be in that situation. Please, pay that price. One day, one day, they will understand. They don't have to understand you now. They will misunderstand you. They will misquote you. They, they will misrepresent you. But keep what God has given you. Like Jesus, keep your focus. Somebody say, I'll keep my focus. Keep your focus on your assignment. Especially if you can, you know, the reason, and I've shared this with you, and is I, I take it very personally. The moment you tell me God told you, and God says, you must stick with it. Because God will not change his mind. Don't come here and tell me, God says, I should come to this church, and tomorrow he says, God, I should go. No, then God didn't speak to you. Hi. If God told you, especially in these years of God told me to marry you. And then along the way, when life begins to life you, you are looking for an escape. And you begin to quote all kinds of scriptures. People will misunderstand you, but stay in it. Is this vision of God, stay with it. Was that dream of God? Can you imagine Abraham was 75 years when God says leave and go to a place that I would make you the father of many nations and gave me a promise that took 25 years to fulfill. It took Joseph 13 years for this dream to manifest. Many of us would have quit. God made a mistake. How can, how can God give me a vision and it's taking me 13 years to see it come to pass? You will deal with the pain of rejection. Men will reject you. Joseph had to deal with his siblings rejected him. Listen, your dream, your vision will cause people to isolate you. They won't like you. Oh, am I helping somebody this morning? Because they don't understand. Why should it be you? Why should you be the one that is blessed? Why should you be the one carrying that vision? People will isolate you, but it is a price for the anointed. One day, the rejection will turn things around. They will come back and celebrate at your table. May God bring all those that rejected you back, and they will see what God has made of you. Joseph had to deal with the pain of betrayal, the pain of being betrayed. How many times have you been betrayed by people? His own siblings, they betrayed him. At, at, at a point, he went to help them with food when, you know, he was, he went, you know, human beings, right? He went to, they were hungry and he was saying, mommy, go and give your siblings food. They took the food and they placed him in a pit and they had a party with the food he brought them. Men and people will never appreciate your sacrifices for them because they don't see. And they will betray you. They will have a party. On your account. But don't give up. One day there will be a gathering again. They will, sit to, they will sit down to eat. And this time you will be the ruler over them. Did somebody try to clap? Did somebody try to clap? Yeah. Listen. Now let them have all the party. And it looks like you are really in a dungeon. It feels like you are really left alone in isolation. But... The tables are about to turn. God is going to turn around for your glory. He had to deal with the pain of ingratitude. And it's a human... Listen, listen. If you have never heard it before, please hear this from this young man. Human beings are ungrateful. It's, it's human nature. Ingratitude is human nature. One, we forget. And two, we don't remember. Like the old rabbi said. 
Ingratitude. When he even was in jail, interpreted dreams, the baker and the butler, and told them that, listen, when you go, remember how I, God gave me a dream, I, I mean, your dreams, and then I interpreted them, and now you are promoted. When you go, remember me two years. They had forgotten him. People will forget you. Hmm. Tell somebody, if they haven't forgotten you yet, get ready. They will forget you. Oh, they'll forget you. They'll forget you. The other day, I told you how I was laying in bed. I don't know. I usually, I don't give to really, I, when I give, I give. I see it as a blessing and opportunity to give. If I can give to help somebody, it means God has blessed me and I'm becoming a blessing. I never give to go back and then think about the, the, the giving. But one day, I was in bed and it just hit me. The people that have passed through this church alone, that we helped. People that had no homes. People that ha could not even pay car loan. The people that we have released out of jail. That we don't come to. Oh, yes. We've gone. We've gone we have. <laughs> and when it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Dom is laughing. <laughs> because he's remembering some things. The people that we've released. And we, we don't announce. We don't broadcast it anywhere. The call comes in and we walk to the jail. We go and then we. We get them out. Parking tickets we are paid. Gro As for groceries, forget it. The cars we washed. The tires we've changed. So when we are starting ministries, you can do things. So I used to, I, that's Sienna. Linda, do you remember that Sienna? Oh, that Sienna would, would I mean, it would. <laughs> we, we remove the chairs and we do movers, like how you move. You know, people are moving. And they don't rent movers, they rent your pastor. <laughs> Mommy, you remember how you moved stuff? <laughs> and it hits me. And I look back and I say, ah, and I was looking through the, the, the church, the congregation, I said, ah, but where is that one? <laughs> and it was just begin, I was beginning to be grateful that at least in their moment of need, God raised us to help them. Yes. But please, if you are, you are waiting for thank you, sometimes your best Breakthrough is not getting a thank you. Not every thank you is readily necessary. Don't look for the thank yous. And what it means is that you don't stop helping people because of their ingratitude. You keep helping. If today those people came back and they were in the same situation, we will help them again. We will help people. That is what God has positioned you for. When you are ready for the throne, somebody will remember you. And that's why you don't stop giving. Don't stop helping. Don't stop changing the tires. Don't stop, don't stop helping, you know, lift. No, keep doing it. The fact that somebody forgot you doesn't mean that somebody else must pay the price. And, and, and No, 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 keep doing them. Let them keep coming. Say, Pastor, how long are they going to make a fool out of me? No, they are not making a fool out of you. They are making a fool out of themselves. Because there will be a time that all these things will turn to your favor. There will be a time that out of the goodness that you have done, God will remember you. And it, he will remember you at the place where you least expected. That is why the brothers of Joseph came back. And Joseph told them that you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. Please hear me, church. Don't stop helping people because of what others did to you. Don't stop giving because of who did not say thank you to you. Don't stop opening your doors because they came in. Jesus Jesus, the Messiah, came for his own. His own rejected him. They nailed him. They killed him on the cross. When he came back, he went to them and opened his arms again to them and showed himself to them. May the Lord help us. Amen. Maybe I can take the next three minutes. Can I talk about one more person? So we talked about Moses. How about David? You want to know about David? The anointing? The price he had to pay from his... It's, it's, it's little self, eight son of these, uh, of Jesse. You will deal with the price of rejection if you are going to walk in the anointing. They will reject you. They left him at the backside of the desert, but God lifted him up again. Are you, are you still here with me? God, God used him at the backside of the desert. The anointing of God was still with him, but he had to pay the price. God chose David, anointed him king 
over the whole Israel. Can you imagine? He was the king of Israel as a youth, but he didn't become the king overnight. He had to first become a king, first over lions and bears, and try to kill them, tear them up, win bat battles. And then he came out, and he, when he came out and he was supposed to be the, the, the king of a world, no, he had to be the king first over one tribe. And out of that, God elevated him. It was all in preparation so that out of him, the scriptures will be fulfilled. Listen, out of every pain that you are in right now, God's word will be fulfilled in your life. Out of every situation, every pain, the price that you pay right now, there will be a reward for you. I see God rewarding you in this year, 2023. Some of you have labored. You have served. You have given. When I read the book of Psalm chapter 20, I am encouraged. Because God never forgets your offering and your titan. He will not forget it. He will remember you. And I pray this morning, like, the, like Moses, God told Moses in, 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 the, in, in, in the scriptures, that he will open that, that his heavens, is it Deuteronomy 28, that verse 12, thereabout? Say that, and I will open the floodgates of heaven and pour you down a blessing. May God open his floodgates upon you in this season. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give rain to your land in this season. May you receive the rain of the Lord because of your labor in his, in his kingdom. I pray this morning that every grace that heaven has will increase upon you as you continue to serve him. As you give yourself to the work of God in the anointing, may God strengthen you. Please hear me. God will never call you and not give you grace. God will never send you on an assignment and, and, and not give you the power and the, and the grace for it. If he called you, he will, he will anoint you for it. May you receive that grace and the anointing this morning. Raise your hand and receive it. I pray for you. Maybe you are dealing with some painful situations like Joseph, like David, like Moses. Maybe you are in your moment of rejection. Maybe you are in your moment of, of, of being betrayed. Maybe you are dealing with some form, some form of misunderstanding. You are being misunderstood. I pray that out of this, the power of God will come upon you. You will rise up and things will turn around to your favor. In the name of Jesus. As this month of March comes to a close in this week, receive the anointing to break through. The anointing to break through hard situations. Life challenges in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will not quit. I pray that you will press on. I pray that you will have the power to endure. The confidence in Christ Jesus. The ability to endure. That which comes from your within. May that be yours in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will mount up with wings like eagles and soar unto higher realms of glory. May that anointing rest upon you, even now and forevermore. Somebody shout, I am a barrier breaker. By the anointing, I will break through. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.